I want to thank all of you for coming. In addition, uh, this is co-sponsored by the Psychology Club and is part of the History of Psychology capstone course. One of the themes in that course is that psychology is a really broad field that gives you opportunities in lots and lots of different careers. And many of those careers don't require graduate degrees. So our panelists today uh, were psych majors and they have uh, very interesting careers that didn't require them to go to graduate school. So we're gonna to start today, um, Mariah, we're gonna start with you and Emma, you can go second. My first question to both of you is, um, how did, is, could you introduce yourself just briefly about who you are and what you do and what you did at St. Ben's and St. John's? Um, if we're fortunate, uh, a third person will be joining us, uh, but um, we'll introduce that person later. Mariah, go ahead. Hi, my name is Mariah Ogden Kellington. Um, I attended at St. Ben's from 2016 and graduated in 2019. Um, with a psychology degree. Um, currently, I'm a police officer in the city of Lakeville in Minnesota. Um, I've been working with them for about a year and a half now as a licensed peace officer. And um, I'm guessing we'll get more into depth about uh, my background and how I got to where I am. Thank you. Emma, you're next. Yes. Hi everyone, it's so good to see all of you. It's so fun that I can actually see the room too. So awesome to virtually meet you all. I was a graduate of the class of 2016 from St. Ben's. I really wish I could go back. It was probably the best four years of my life. Um, I obviously was a psychology major, but um, funny enough, actually went through probably four or five majors to get there. So if you have also been on a similar journey, um, I definitely didn't find psychology right away, but really, really loved it. And my current position is a talent acquisition consultant for Philips. I always say like the Sonicare toothbrush. So I'm in recruiting. Thank you. My first question for both of you is, what advice would you give to the students in this room or any St. John's or St. John's students who wanted to get a job in your field? So, Maya, you can go first, and Emma? I think uh, the biggest piece of advice, or at least what uh, benefited me greatly, was just looking for experiences outside of the classroom, internships, student aid sort of things. I mean, I think it, it took me a long ways in putting it on your resume and showing that you're really interested and in, uh, you were going above and beyond. And it actually helped me with the various internships I did uh, figure out exactly what field I wanted to go into. Since my career path was always kind of focused on law enforcement, um, I interned with the FBI and uh, West St. Paul Police Department. And both of those gave me different glimpses into law enforcement and ultimately ended up becoming a police officer. But yeah, I would say just take all the opportunities that come your way, even if you don't think they're going to interest you. I think it, it always adds something to your resume and it makes you a better, well-rounded person when you're going out into the job field, applying for jobs. And I would say the turning point for me, um, similar to what Mariah said in exploration, was I had all these different, not only majors, but different careers that I thought I saw myself in. And a lot of them I had never actually experienced or seen anything hands-on or shadowed or done anything in person or even had a conversation with someone in that career. So I took the opportunity in the career office, I forget exactly what it's called, if it's um, a database of some sort, took some alumni names and started to do informational interviews over the phone. And I picked people purposely in all different areas. Highly recommend if you haven't done that already, just having a 20, 30 minute phone conversation with an alum, even a non-alum, just someone in a field you're interested in, similar to what Mariah said, and just getting that exposure, that helped me to do process of elimination. There were a few that I really thought I would be good at or excel in, and I ended up actually checking them off my list as far as careers I was interested in, just hearing more day to day and then shadowing, like getting out and on a Christmas break or holiday break or um, some time when you have extra outside of the classroom time, just going and actually seeing an office or where someone works can be super beneficial. So I would highly recommend the two of those. Jackie, can you let Tom in? He's in the waiting room. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know. 
No, I do not. I can admit him, it looks like. Yeah. Nope. We got it. We got it. Who just got it? While we're waiting for Tom to turn on his microphone. Um, my next question for the two of you is, um, you've all, you've both been out for just a few years. What one piece of advice would you give to a, a junior or senior? That's a good question. Um, I guess it's a similar to the last question you kind of asked. Um, I mean, as a junior or senior, I know you become more pressured to figure out exactly what career path you want to go into. But I think that time is a great opportunity to look for internships because ultimately everything you're learning in the classroom is great and it's going to help you in whatever field you go into. But uh, actually shadowing people in professions that you're interested in is actually going to guide you in. You'll either determine whether you're interested in that career and it's for you, kind of along the lines um, of what Emma already said, but otherwise you can check that off your list and move on to a different internship or go shadow somebody else so you can get a better idea of exactly what you want to do with your psych degree major. Kind of like we already talked about, it's very versatile and there's so many different avenues you can go down with it. And I would add briefly to that, rather than this is what I did as a junior or senior, focusing on this is my career that's going to be the rest of my life. I'm committing my life by deciding what job I want to have or what step I want to take. Um, just realizing how much you're going to learn what you love along the way. You're going to take things from every experience, whether it's a job, an internship, even an on-campus role can help you learn what you like and what you don't like. And just I know it's kind of cliche, but knowing that it's really a journey and you learn things through every position, no matter how short. Um, or how long it is and not having to commit when you come out of school. It's such a, um, a learning experience. Very good. Let's pause here. Can we get Tom to? Um, oh my goodness. I don't oh. know. What... Glad you're here, my friend. Glad, glad to be here. So sorry for my lateness. You might be able to see my furry friend in the background here. He decided to have a, yeah. an accident right before I was about to get on. <laughs> so... It, it's Clean that up. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, we've already started, but um, if you could introduce yourself a little bit and then uh, talk about kind of what advice you would give for someone who wants your current job. So talk about your job too, and then, then we'll get caught up and we'll turn it back over to the three of you with our next question. Sounds good. Yes. Um, my name is Tom Hawkins. Uh, I graduated in 2021 with a degree in psychology um, from St. John's. Uh, I also focused on pre-medicine. Um, and currently I work at the St. Cloud Hospital as a behavioral health technician, um, which is a role similar to like a, a nursing assistant, CNA or a PCA at the hospital. Um, but I work exclusively on the adult and adolescent inpatient mental health units. Um, so for those of you with any interest in clinical psychology or abnormal psychology, um, uh, this role is working directly with patients running the entire spectrum of mental illness and usually in very acute, very intense, uh, periods of that illness. Um, so anyone can apply for this job. Uh, they prefer a degree in psychology, um, but that's not necessary. You could start working, um, right now there are kind of part-time or casual positions uh, open and you'd be working directly with patients and nurses and psychiatrists and social workers um, and seeing how all of those roles kind of fit together uh, in caring for individuals with very acute uh, and sometimes also with chronic uh, mental health struggles. So. Um, how did you get your current job? Um, I got this current job. So uh, like I said, my focus was in uh, pre-medicine. So I am looking potentially for a career in a hospital setting, in a healthcare setting. Um, and my grandma actually used to work on the unit that I currently work on, 
So I was already kind of aware uh, that it existed. Um, and that was, that was why it was on my radar. I also uh, had interviewed and spoken to the psychiatrist who worked on that unit, who's kind of the main psychiatrist for the inpatient unit. Um, and I had connected with him about some career questions and things like that. Um, but I also now uh, I'll be speaking in front of you have uh, Amanda Janser. Um, I spoke in her class last year and I will again uh, this year in a couple of weeks. Um, and we've tried to kind of spread the news about the fact that this is uh, an open position and it's so directly applicable uh, to people who are looking for experience in that field. Thank you, Tom. My next question for all three of you is kind of what are the things you love most about your jobs and what are the things that are most challenging about your jobs? Um, and this is in part to give uh, people here an idea of what you actually do. So um, take as much time as you want. We're also gonna have a lot of time a little in a little bit for uh, people here to ask you questions. Um, but we'll start with Emma. Uh, we'll, no, we'll start with Mariah, then we'll go to Emma, and then finally we'll go to Tom. So what do you love? What are the challenging things? So once again, I'm a police officer in Lakeville, Minnesota. Um, I would say, so Lakeville is kind of a suburb of further south from like the Twin Cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis. Um, I'd say what I love about my job the most is that it's different every day. Um, I don't sit in an office. Um, I have a very type A personality and uh, sitting in an office just wasn't for me. Um, being out and about and interacting with people in the community. I was born and raised in Lakeville too. So I know the community well, and this job just gives me another way to be involved in my community. Um, I would say the greatest parts other than getting to do something different every day is just the opportunities that are available, at least within my department. Um, my department has about a hundred sworn officers, which is pretty large uh, department for a suburb, but Lakeville is one of the biggest cities in Minnesota. Uh, surprisingly, it is a suburb, but uh, there's a lot of housing, uh, not a whole lot of commercial or residential. So we have a lot of people that reside in our city. Um, I would say just the opportunities that are available for any of you that have ever thought about law enforcement or are interested in becoming a police officer. Um, our department has K9 unit. So if you, anyone's interested in having a dog or a school resource officer where you're the police officer that's embedded in our high schools um, to deal with any issues that arise with students. Um, we have a street crimes unit, drug task force, um, just to name a few. There's so many opportunities available um, that, I mean, I'm hoping that I will become a part of throughout my career and it'll just give me a, a different view into law enforcement and keep things exciting. Um, I would say probably the most difficult part of my job, um, I mean, it, the climate is a little different for law enforcement right now. It's not uh, the most positive time, but um, once again, I work in a community that is so supportive. I would say 99% of the people I'd walk up to on the street support me and what I do. And it does go a long way when you're interacting with people and the fact that people in our community are supportive of us and they want to reach out to law enforcement. Um, I mean, that's what keeps us kind of in business is having people feeling comfortable to call 911 and have police officers come and help them with whatever issue that they have going on. But that is all. Go ahead, Emma. Yes. So as I mentioned, I am in recruiting. And to be honest, I had no idea what a recruiter was when I was at St. Ben's or that it was even a career path um, and really coming out of school ended up in my first role in agency. Really my my day to day and I think it's similar along a lot of threads with recruiting but there's a lot of different areas that you can recruit for industries. Um, what I love about my role and, um, and some of my favorite parts are I get to connect with candidates and help them find jobs almost every day and I also get to connect with leaders at the company that I work for to help them really find what they need for their team and to meet with them and really discover, um, is it someone that we're looking for right out of school with zero to three years of experience? Is it a really seasoned person um, in their career? So really diving in on both sides and getting to find these matches. So 
a person fit for the job that a company needs. It's so rewarding to be able to get someone their next job opportunity. Oftentimes it's a really big decision. So really getting to be with them along their career journey is one of my favorite parts um, for sure of my role. So really that people connection. Um, another thing that I think about just in the recruiting role in general is I'm always learning. I'm always learning something new. So every new position or job that gets assigned to me, I get the opportunity to meet with the leader and they tell me what's going on within their team. Is it a new product that they're developing that they need someone to help them market? Is it um, a really technical hands-on programmer that they need for a certain project? So I really get hands-on experience and in-depth experience with what's going on in different parts of the business, which is really interesting for me and really what keeps me energized to really learn new parts of um, really just the business world in general through the roles that I, I hire for. And then I love how flexible my schedule is. It's another big piece um, and something that draws me to recruiting. I actually get to make my calendar every week. So if I would like to have my mornings be where I talk to candidates on the phone, I can set all of my phone screens in the morning. Or if I feel like um, an afternoon I'd like to spend on LinkedIn looking for prospective candidates, I can block my calendar off for a few hours. So um, similar to what Mariah said, and every day being different, I love that about my job, but I love the flexibility to kind of schedule in different meetings and things um, throughout each week. I would say on the flip side, some challenges to my role. Um, I'm very detail oriented, so I, I like it to an extent, but it's very process oriented and can be repetitive. Obviously the phone screen questions that I ask are pretty much consistent across the board, give or take a few questions. So a lot of the processes and the different things I do while they're for different roles and different candidates, um, a lot of the, the processes can be repetitive. So that's obviously not for everyone. Um, and another big thing is the company that I work for now is a huge organization. So learning about the different areas within the company and learning which cross-functional partners or just different people that I work with and where they fall within the business can be really challenging and, and kind of a learning curve in the beginning. So like I said, the recruiter role functions within a lot of different companies, but as you transition, and I've had, um, this is my third role professionally in my career, each company is just a little bit different. So learning that can be challenging, but um, overall, I hope that was helpful in an overview. Thank you. Tom? Um, I would say that the most difficult and most rewarding parts of my job are um, the same thing, uh, the, the patients that I work with um, uh, and, and kind of the problem solving that we do in order to create and enact uh, treatment plans um, because mental health in terms of healthcare is, is one of the most interesting fields to be a part of uh, because it's probably the least black and white area of a hospital or a clinic that you could work in. Um, there's a couple good ways to set a bone couple good ways to deliver a baby. Um, there is no handbook or bulleted list or flow sheet on how to get a person with intense schizophrenic episodes to take their medication consistently. So that's where kind of thinking outside of the box uh, comes into play. Um, I, I've developed uh, a very good gut feeling um, and a lot of really good communication skills, um, not only just through direct experience with patients, but through um, actual trainings that, that the unit puts us through, um, such as nonviolent crisis intervention, um, motivational inter interviewing training, um, uh, zones of regulation training for younger patients. Um, and it can be incredibly difficult to interact with someone on what generally is one of the worst days of their life, um, but then it can also be incredibly rewarding um, to see an improvement, whether that's uh, a, a kind of uh, an incline out of a depressive episode or a decline out of a manic episode and then get to eventually speak with the people that you care for and, and hear um, not always gratitude, unfortunately, being in, in an acute setting. Uh, once patients start to get a little bit better, then they move on. Um, so we don't always get to see the, the, um, the large scale effects of our treatment, but a lot of times it can be a wonderful evening just to sit down and be able to play a, a card game with the person who a few days ago wouldn't even look at you, so.
My last question before we open it up uh, for Q&A is what specific and general uh, skills did you learn at CSBSJU that are helping you in your current job? So you can start with either the general ones or the specific ones. And Mariah, you can go ahead and we'll go in the same order. You can go first. But... Alrighty, I would say some uh, general skills that I learned at CSB and SJU just that helped me throughout my career was just communication. Um, I think uh, just the atmosphere that St. John's, St. Ben's kind of provides with the dual campus and you getting to interact with, I mean, professors at both schools um, and the professionals that come on to campus, like alums and that sort of thing, taking advantage of those events. Um, just another general thing, just the Benny and Johnny community that there is, um, I think is something very unique to our school um, to take advantage of. Uh, having those networks and those connections, I mean, all of our alums are more than willing to help you out in any aspect if you're curious about what they do in their job. And I think that's very unique to our school that we still stay very embedded in um, our school to reach back out to current students. And I would just take advantage of that while you were there. Um, I'd say specific skills, um, just in specific to my job as a police officer that I learned. I took a lot of classes in Professor Anna Millman's classes, um, forensic psychology and just stuff about legal things. Um, it really helped me pinpoint, uh, I guess, the skills I would need to go into a career as a police officer. And I started seeking out um, opportunities that would give me those skills. Um, lots of internships. Um, may have gone a little overboard in my time there. I interned uh, as uh, with uh, West St. Paul Police Department. Um, that was kind of my first view into law enforcement. And I mean, the skills and stuff that I learned from those classes though, and the communication I would just say is the biggest thing, not being scared to reach out to people, um, to ask them if you can have these opportunities because the worst thing they're gonna say is no. And if they do say yes, it's gonna help you grow exponentially and who you are as a person and as a professional. Um, once you do start getting into a career field. But I would say that is it. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Emma? Yes. I'll start general as well. Um, I think active listening is a big one that I've utilized, as you can imagine, the amount that I communicate not only over uh, virtual, but over the phone and in team meetings and meeting with, um, with leaders. I just remember really having to learn that skill going through classes, maybe not always understanding what was happening in a lecture or being within a group project and someone maybe knowing a little bit more about a topic than I did, or just that skill of having to listen to others around you before, you know, contributing and just learning to really listen well and attentively to gather as much as you need from a, a meeting or a class. Um, another one I think about is attention to detail and time management. I think those two go hand in hand, but as I've managed my schedule in my career and specifically in my role as a recruiter and just the detail that I have to various meetings that I have and preparing for them. And it all ties back and makes me think of class and having to prepare and follow a syllabus, but also prepare for another class that I had going on at the same time. And just thinking about all that balance and really having to prioritize homework or prioritize projects and meeting with groups, it all lends itself so well to the professional world and all the different <laughs> different balls you have to juggle, um, if you will, if, when you're in the professional world and have a full calendar of, of meetings and things to tend to. Um, going more specifically into my role, I think networking was a huge thing that I was super uncomfortable with when I was at school, but I learned to really love and it's helped me a ton. I think virtually getting familiar with LinkedIn when I was at school, starting to build my network, that's a huge recommendation that I missed actually in the beginning. Um, when I was, I should have shared what I recommended there is just building your LinkedIn profile, starting to network with alumni um, or areas that you see are interesting. So I just learned what networking meant and showing up at the events, like where I said with alumni and being really uncomfortable in person, like meeting someone and telling a little bit about yourself and just getting more comfortable with that communication, sometimes on the fly is something that I've definitely had to utilize in my work. And um, also just working as a team and, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but working collaboratively 
um, influencing others. I remember speech class and having to really take a stand on a topic. Um, and also social psychology, just learning how people are different and how people function differently and just all the different emotions and um, and I think a personality psychology too. So some of the things that I've specifically used in meeting with so many people in my current career. Thank you. Tom? Uh, I'll start with, with specific information that, uh, that I learned while at, at St. John St. Ben's. Um, the, the field of mental health is, is difficult because people are all different, of course. And so mental illness manifests in many, many different ways, um, in ways that are as unique as the people that, that have those illnesses. Um, but in taking abnormal psychology and clinical psychology, I gained a context and a base from which to build uh, my, my information um, and my kind of skills and strategies uh, for working with with people with those illnesses, um, so it's it's one thing to kind of read about a complex illness such as schizophrenia or um, personality disorders or dissociative identity disorder things like that. It's another thing to actually speak face to face with a person with that illness. Um, and I, I think if I uh, hadn't taken those classes or hadn't even paid attention in, in the way that I did and, and was interested in the way that I did, then it would be a lot more difficult uh, to enter that world. Um, broadly, um, I know Mariah and Emma both mentioned communication and, and teamwork. Um, and I'll say the words again, group projects. <laughs> I hated them. Um, I, I don't know of anyone who really loved them, but they are so incredibly important in building your ability to talk to people, to be honest with people and to listen to people, um, to give and to take feedback. Uh, because in the medical world, especially, there's kind of a hierarchy, like it or not. And um, it's very important that you be able to hear out people who are uh, maybe above you, who have input and training, even though it might seem like they're going against uh, what your gut is saying or what you know do already work. Um, and then at the same time, to be able to speak up and say, you know, I have tried that or I don't think that'll work uh, or I think we should try something else. Um, so building your own confidence in your interpersonal relationship skills is something that group projects can do. So engage with those projects. Um, don't be the, the social loafer, as it were. Um, make sure that you can contribute because those skills, no matter what your field is, uh, will set you apart. Absolutely. Thanks to all three of you. Adia, we're going to open it up for a Q&A now. How do you want to structure the Q&A? So we can certainly just have students pose a question. Sometimes just for sound purposes, it might be helpful. You can restate it for our panelists okay. in case um, it doesn't quite come through totally clearly. Um, but that, that tends to be the easiest way versus having people try and come up. So, okay. so what questions do people have? They completely are ignoring your advice and not asking any questions. <laughs> There's a certain irony here. I guess what kind of hours do each of them work? Is it a Monday through Friday type job, nine to five? Okay. Uh, we have an excellent opening question. It's very practical. What kind of hours do each of you work? Um, is it nine to five? Is it flexible? How many hours? Um, so um, let's go in reverse order and we'll go Tom, Emma, and Mark. Caught me off guard, Dr. Livingston. All right. Um, so a hospital is different, obviously, than like an office job because people have to be there 24-7. Um, there are lots of hours that can be worked uh, in the position that I'm in uh, or for like a, a registered nurse position or something like that. Um, you can either work eight-hour shifts that are day shifts, which are 7 to 3 or 7 to 3.30, um, evening shifts, which are 3 to 11.30, 
or 12 hour shifts, which is seven to seven, either AM or PM. Um, I started as alternating day and eve eight hour shifts that brought havoc on my um, kind of sleep schedule and my eating schedule. And um, I switched to 12 hour shifts, which when I first heard about them, I was like, that sounds disgusting. Uh, why would I want to work for 12 hours in a row? Um, but the law of inertia says that it's much easier to kind of continue doing what you're doing than it is to pick up and do something else. So it's a lot easier to be at the hospital for 12 hours and then to go home and have a couple extra full days off during the week because I can work three days in a row and that's 36 hours. That's almost a full-time work week. Work week. Um, so I find that incredibly worth it. Um, some people work 16 hour shifts. Don't recommend that. No human is meant to do that. Um, but there are even opportunities at the hospital to just work in four hour chunks. Uh, anyway, so very flexible. Emma? Yes, mine's a little bit different. I work, um, so mine would be considered more of an office job. I actually am fully remote in my current position, um, but work Monday through Friday. And I have a flexible schedule. So it's interesting with Philips being a global company, this is my first experience with a global uh, time zone difference in a lot of my teams. And so I find that on the days that I start earlier, like I have a 7 a.m. meeting, I might end earlier. Um, I try to take a break at least midday throughout the day. But typically, if I have um, a normal day, it's eight to four ish, uh, but kind of adjusting depending on my schedule. So depending on when meetings are and such. I would say mine is kind of similar to what Tom was saying. So as a police officer, at least in the city I work in, um, we work 12-hour shifts. Um, I know a lot of police departments vary, and they do 10s or sometimes 8s. Um, it just changes how many days a week you work. So technically, I work half the year. Um, I work five days every two weeks. Um or seven days. So I, this week is my long week. So I work five days and then next week I'll only work two and I'll have next weekend off too. So I work every other weekend. So that's something else to keep in mind. It's not a normal Monday through Friday job. It, typically there is some weekend requirement depending on what department you go with. Um, working 12 hour shifts, kind of like Tom said, it does go by quick. I'd much rather work the longer shifts than 10 hour shifts. And I have to give up an another day off. Um, I guess um, that's kind of our schedule. It varies like the days that you work. I have a set schedule that this week I worked Monday, Tuesday. Um, I'm off today and tomorrow. And then I work all weekend. And then next week it flip flops to only work Wednesday and Thursday. Um, but once again, that's all kind of, like I said, you only work half the year um, at my department. So, I mean, you have a lot of free time. It may not feel like it with the hours that you work, um, but there is a lot of opportunity for overtime. So we pick that up quite often, or at least I take advantage of it. So, I mean, you can work as much or as little as you want, essentially. It's kind of a nice opportunity to have. Thank you all. Next question. One more question. Um, like what kind of internships would you guys recommend based on the job that you have? So this is a, again a specific question. What type of internships would you recommend given the job that you have? Uh, Emma, you can go first and then. Yes. So I know each company structures talent acquisition internships a little bit differently. Um, but I think talent acquisition gets a little bit confused sometimes with HR and the overlap. They're, I would call, sister organizations, sometimes more blended together uh, on some teams, depending on the, the size of the company. Any exposure you can get to, um, if recruiting is of interest or talent acquisition, there's a lot of different areas within it that I didn't even get into, but um, anything that could help you get exposure to the different areas of talent acquisition or HR. A lot of times they're, they're structured intentionally pretty broad, so a talent acquisition intern or an HR intern or talent acquisition operations intern, just to give you the opportunity to shadow, see the different parts like compensation, benefits that go into um, HR and sometimes into TA work. Um, so really 
I've seen quite a few different opportunities. It's just a matter of the size of the company that you might be interested in and trying. I would recommend just based on being at a smaller company and a bigger company, if you can going for a bigger organization, just giving a little bit uh, broader experience and sometimes more different departments to get exposure to and, uh, and that might be of interest to you. So I always recommend searching in LinkedIn, various job boards have them, company specific websites, if there's industries that you're interested in, every company has some form of HR and talent acquisition. So I would highly recommend looking for anything in an internship in that area to get a foundation of experience. Uh, Mariah, you wanna go next? Sure, yeah. So I kind of touched on it a little bit already. I did a couple of internships in my time while I was at St. Vincent St. John's. Um, I My first internship, kind of like I already mentioned, was with West St. Paul PD. Um, I So I would just reach out to any opportunity, essentially, that comes your way in a career that you think you might be interested in. It'll just give you at least a glimpse into it. Or if it's not like feasible for the timing that you have, even just shadowing a professional for a day to see if what they do in a day interests you and you could see yourself in their footsteps and doing what they do. Um, but I did that internship and then I also interned with the FBI and it was a really cool experience and it's a little different, I guess. So versus local law enforcement, being a police officer and the FBI is a federal agency, so it's federal law enforcement based. So I was able to get a glimpse into both and I I really liked uh, the federal law enforcement route and I uh, actually got a job with them like straight out of college. And I ultimately ended up deciding to go a different path and go back to local law enforcement. I I like being out and about and interacting with the community and people firsthand. So that's why I went back to this. But I also just want to touch if there is anybody that is interested in becoming a police officer, there is extra schooling you have to do. Um, just because we do go to St. Bans and St. John's and there isn't a curriculum specific uh, for law enforcement. So you, I got my psychology degree and then I ended up going to a local community college to get my law enforcement certificate because you do have to be licensed in the state of Minnesota to be a police officer. Um, so that took about another year, year and a half of schooling for me to do. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, internships, like I said, anything that's... in you're interested in your career field um, or that you're looking into. Um, I also, when I was at St. Benson St. John's, I did a lot of TA work for professors, um, helping out on those ends. Also, can't remember exactly what it was called, but um, I was with Ben Faber, one of your guys' professors there, and I helped him out with one of his, um, I think it was like a experiment or something of that sort, some lab work. Um, and that was really a good glimpse to see if I was interested in maybe pursuing a master's degree and that if I was interested in lab work and the um, studies that he was conducting. So I would just say any opportunities that arise at St. Ben's, St. John's while you're there is great. Also, I worked um, with St. John's Life Safety. So here guys is like security on campus. I mean, that just helps build my resume a little bit more, even though it was an on-campus job, it gave me a glimpse into law enforcement and I built more connections with people in my career field, so. Um, I only had one internship experience while I was at St. Ben St. John's. Uh, that was while I was in London and the internship is built into the, the London Study Abroad Program. Um, mm -hmm. There I worked at a, an organization, a nonprofit called the Harrington Scheme. Um, which is kind of like a, a school and education center uh, for adolescents and young adults with physical and mental disabilities. Um, and that was amazing. I got to work with some incredible people um, and got to learn about kind of the nonprofit and mental health systems in Great Britain, which are obviously different from those in the US and, and kind of see how they did things and some of their strategies um, for uh, behavioral plans and for um, accommodations. Um, and then I, I would agree with, with Emma and Mariah, kind of dip your toes into whatever could be interesting. Um, at the very least, it could help you cross it off your list. Um, if you have an internship and you're working with small children and then you hate it, then you'll know. Um, better that than to think you wanna be an elementary school teacher and then 
go through all of that whole rigmarole and then not like or want to do what you're doing. Um, I uh, got to do my experiential learning experience through developmental psychology, uh, the class that I took there. Um, I did work with elementary school students, um, and that was fantastic. Um, my future career is going to be focused on adolescents and children. Um, so that helps kind of cement it for me. Um, and then on campus jobs too, like don't limit yourself just to internships, um, get a wide variety of experiences, uh, volunteer work. Um, my on campus job was in the accessibility services uh, department here at, um, at St. Ben St. John's, which gave me some context and some information about like HIPAA um, and how to interact with students' medical information um, and uh, dealing with kind of the, the structure of the files and the legality of that. Um, and then I also did volunteer work at the hospital that I now work at, which um, gave me some idea of kind of what that hospital culture looks at. Um, like Emma said, it can be it can be difficult to kind of break into um, a, a career field where there is kind of a distinct culture. Um, and I mentioned before that there is kind of a hierarchy in a hospital setting just by virtue of how it works. Um, and so just getting yourself acquainted with whatever environment you're going to be working with or you want to potentially work with will be hugely helpful um, and set you up for, for success no matter where you end up. Thank you all. More questions? One question I have for the three of you, uh, which may be of interest to uh, folks here is, most people don't have a clear understanding of kind of different career paths. Where do you see, given your current jobs, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Uh, where do you see yourself going? And Emma, we can start with you. Where do you see yourself going? Wow. <laughs> where do I see myself going? Honestly, I have loved getting to know the recruiter role. And I also was the talent acquisition coordinator previous to this. And now in my current role, work with onboarding coordinators and scheduling coordinators. So all these different roles that function together to help candidates ultimately apply for and get jobs. And I've realized that the interesting thing about that is the different areas that I could either go into or the opportunity I might have to lead a team of individuals that do what I do. So it's been interesting to think about coming into, like I said, a bigger company in my current position. In 10 years, part of me sees myself as potentially leading a team of recruiters like myself. So getting the hands-on experience, really sharpening my tool belt, all the resources that I have, and just getting experience in different jobs and hiring for a variety of different leaders, and then being able to provide support and advice and really help to grow others. I think it would be really, uh, really rewarding to be on that side of it. So it's definitely something that I've thought about and have started to kind of dig into whether it's leadership courses or just kind of do on the side to be able to grow some of those skills. So leadership path is really common in recruiting, um, but also there's the development within role too, which I think is oftentimes missed. So I thought about leadership, but I've also thought about what would it mean to be really good at my role to take on maybe more jobs at a time and become more specialized. So to, to really support a specific group or a specific business, um, and really get to know and grow my network so much so in Minneapolis and in other markets that I don't even live in, um, that I'm able to really recruit faster and just be more efficient at my role. So what would that maybe look like? Um, so that's the fun thing about recruiting. There's just so many different neighboring teams. I called it sister teams before, HR that works more closely with business leaders too, and um, a lot of different paths to go on, so. All right. You want to go next? Sure, yeah. Um, I guess in 10 years, I mean, I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. I've thought what I would do if I left uh, being a police officer. It's very hard to think of uh, leaving a job where I have so much freedom and every day is different to going to an office setting. Um, it's very difficult for me to stay put all day. Um, so I'm enjoying what I'm doing now. Um, I'm looking forward to, I'm like, uh, 
this whole panel is about. You don't need a graduate degree to become a police officer or anything like that. But I am starting my master's degree um, in cybersecurity soon. Um, so that has always just been a goal of mine to get a graduate degree. And with that, I just am looking to get more skills and be more versatile if I do end up leaving um, the field of being a police officer. Um, Ultimately, I could see myself going back to the FBI at some point um, once I've gotten the experience I want from being a police officer. Um, but right now, I'm really loving what I'm doing and being out and interacting with people firsthand. So, um, This is an excellent question and one that I think is very pertinent for um, the folks in the room and, and even for myself, because if you had asked me this question um, a year ago, I would have told you uh, that I would see myself being a psychiatrist uh, and having a, a medical degree and um, living probably somewhere in the cities. But over the past probably six months, that track has very much shifted for me. Um, uh, after having worked in a medical setting and seeing exactly um, what the role of a psychiatrist is in the care of the patient population that we serve, um, I've decided to shift my focus. Um, I work with social workers and psychotherapists uh, and people who have different roles and different degrees. And, and um, now I am hoping to go to graduate school to get a PhD in um, developmental uh, clinical psychology, um, which is, you know, a lot to think about uh, and a lot of work uh, in the future. But I am very thankful that my current position uh, has been kind of a stepping stone um, and given me that insight that I was talking about before into what the roles of um, different people within a workspace are um, so that I could make that decision because it would be not awesome to be in my first year of medical school and thinking I don't actually want to do this. Um, so 10 years from now, I, I hope to have uh, a PhD and to be working um, in a clinical setting, uh, probably with adolescents with mental illness, um, doing research. I love to do research. Um, I did my um, psychology thesis uh, at St. Penn St. John's um, talking about uh, gender and emotions and um, sports and a whole range of different things. And I, I hope to kind of continue that interest um, moving forward. Um, so it's, it can change. Your 10-year plan can change um, very quickly, and it has, but I'm happier for it. I want to thank all of you very, very much for giving us your time and, and the uh, insights that you've shared with us. Um, could we give them a round of applause? Even though first... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us, panelists. Thank you so much to see you all. Um, thanks everybody for being here. Um, if you are um, interested in connecting with any of these panels, please um, connect with me or someone in XPD. We can certainly look at passing on some contact information with their approval. Um, we're happy to connect you and also know that XPD continues to be a resource for um, all of your, your development needs as you're plotting your course here, wherever you are in your journey. So thanks again to the Psych Club and thanks again to Dr. Livingston um, and his Psych History course for partnering with us today. Um, we hope to see you in XPD and in the hub. Thanks everybody. Thanks again, everyone. You rock. Yeah, thank you.